lying between Albany and Esperance on the south coast of Western Australia. The Fitzgerald Biosphere Reserve features some amazing areas to visit. A prominent feature at the heart of this is the Fitzgerald River National Park. The park, which is managed by the Department of Environment and Conservation, features everything from rugged coastlines and ever-changing sand dunes to complex inland river systems and gorges. Containing more than 20% of Western Australia's plant species and more than the entire British Isles, the Fitzgerald River National Park is one of the state's most important parks for plant and animal conservation. The Barron and Ravensthorpe Ranges, Hammersley River and Bremer Bay are just a few of the places people travel from miles away to see, and it's largely due to the immense history of the landscape. Ancient rock formations were influenced by the once close connection to Antarctica as part of the southern supercontinent Gondwana. Higher sea levels created islands where plants and animals evolved in isolation. These and many other factors have resulted in the huge richness of plants and animals in the area today. The Dibbler, once thought to be extinct, and the Western Ground Parrot are some of the rarest. While over 100 plant species living here occur nowhere else in the world, the Royal Hakia is one of the most stunning. All around this area, and, and Ravensthorpe is um, particularly noted, noted for this, is the um, diversity of plants and you know, eucalypts and all the other sorts of plants. And so um, the Fitzgerald River National Park is set aside to conserve the bush as it is. And there, there are, I think about 2,000 different species have been identified and there are a lot more that haven't been identified. And so it's been set aside for that. So that it's a great asset really. The park receives around 50,000 visitors each year mostly around spring in the wildflower season. Yet it remains one of the most pristine national parks in Australia, which is why it is so important to keep protecting it. With threats to native vegetation, such as salinity and erosion, feral animals and the possible impacts of climate change, these special areas are in danger. But probably the most devastating and immediate threat is from Phytophthora dieback. Phytophthora dieback is caused by a microorganism called Phytophthora cinnamomai, which was introduced into Australia more than 100 years ago. The disease was first recognised in jarrah trees, so used to be called jarrah dieback. However, other plant species are much more susceptible. The spread of the disease in WA is extensive, reaching north of Perth through the southwest corner and east beyond Esperance. Although the disease can spread through the soil on its own via water movement and between plants by root-to-root -root contact, the biggest risk of new infestation comes from us. Living in the soil, dieback zoospores move naturally through soil water. They are chemically attracted to the roots of plants and it's from here they invade. This causes the roots to rot, starving the plant of vital water and nutrients. Death amongst susceptible species can occur within a few weeks. Despite the pathogen being able to lie dormant for several years, the dieback spores thrive in warm, moist conditions. When these occur, the disease is extremely active and can spread rapidly. Humans can spread the disease in many ways. Soil sticks to boots, vehicles and machinery. And if that soil contains a pathogen and has moved into an uninfested area, its impact on biodiversity can be devastating. Dieback fronts often originate from contaminated roads and tracks and can sometimes be clearly seen moving through bushland, especially when viewed from the air. It's not just native plants, but animals that rely on these plants for food or shelter, which can disappear from infested areas. 
In southwest of Western Australia, we have one of nature's treasures, which is a small marsupial called the honey possum, which is unique for many reasons. It only eats nectar and to a lesser extent pollen. So it is entirely dependent on the diversity of fl flowering vegetation, which also is quite susceptible to dieback. One reason it's so devastating is that dieback affects 40% of southwestern Australia's native flora species, especially the banksias, heaths, peas and myrtles. Many plants across the south coast, which exist nowhere else in the world, are seriously threatened and face extinction from this disease. Although a lot is being done to reduce the impact, there is currently no known cure. Phytophthora dieback also kills common plants like roses, avocados and citrus trees and can survive happily in your garden. The good news is there is a lot being done to reduce the impact of dieback and you can help too. Mapping of where dieback is distributed in the south coast region highlights heavily infested areas like the Stirling Range and Cape Le Grand National Parks. Some of the plants in these areas are extremely rare and their very existence is threatened by dieback. Here, much effort is made to protect these from extinction by spraying areas with phosphite, a chemical which increases the plant's resistance to the disease. But the real gems of mapping as highlighted are the areas that are relatively uninfested and contain so many unique species that with minimal effort, we can preserve in their current state. Places like the Fitzgerald River National Park and other natural areas like the Ravensthorpe Range. Dieback already poses a risk in the area with infestations known along Springdale and Mason Bay Roads near Hopetown. South Coast NRM's role in the management of dieback is quite pivotal, I believe, in that it's been acknowledged at the state level as a major issue, but the community input into, into the management and the community's role in taking a, what I would say is a stronger focus on the management of dieback has meant that um, we've been able to attract significant amounts of dollars towards priority actions such as mapping dieback across the region and to ensure that, that we do have a good understanding of, of dieback and uh, from that we can go out and develop management plans for priority areas to ensure that as a community we're aware of where dieback is or aware of how to manage it so we don't un unknowingly, unwittingly go out there and spread dieback. Without expert knowledge, Phytophthora dieback can be hard to identify in the field. Especially when areas can seem uninfested but the plants surviving may not be susceptible to the disease. There has also been a new signage system introduced for use on private and public land to help you identify infested and dieback free areas. This is important because taking infected soil or plant material into dieback free areas will introduce the disease and devastate the area. The management approach by the Department of Environment and Conservation for the Fitzgerald River National Park has been able to focus on keeping the disease out. When it rains, roads are closed to reduce the risk of introducing the disease. Some tracks are closed permanently in order to protect the areas. This is why staying on tracks and following road signs is so important. It's to help protect the areas from the disease. Local groups like the Fitzgerald Biosphere Group, Friends of the Fitzgerald River National Park and RAIN are playing a vital role in this joint approach with the Department of Environment and Conservation and the South Coast NRM to protect our valued natural areas and raise the awareness about what the community and visitors can do to help. The good news is you can help us prevent the human spread of this devastating disease in this unique area. Dieback can mostly be confined to existing areas by not moving soil or plant material from infested areas. When driving, stick to dry, well-formed roads and steer clear of mud and water, as this is the safest way to travel without spreading dieback. When going into a new area, we need to make sure we are not bringing in disease. Think about where you have come from and if the area could have been infested. As a precaution, any soil should be washed or brushed down from your boots and vehicle undercarriage before entering new areas. And this includes bikes. Once your footwear and equipment is free of soil, a cheap and easy way to ensure that it is free of dieback is to spray with 100% methylated spirits. However, the best way to minimise the risk of picking up infected soil is to only go out to natural areas in dry conditions. 
Dieback poses a major threat to this unique environment. But our collective behaviour can control how far it spreads, so these places keep looking just as good every time we come back.